Hey friends, today's topic is the Into the Light reveal stream. That footage will not be on your screen right now, so feel free to do your dishes, laundry, whatever. You've already seen Dado's video, you've already seen Fallout's video, so you probably just want to listen to something, maybe eat lunch. I'm here for that today. And I'm just gonna talk, I have a couple notes on the side, etc. So, in general, it feels like my feedback repeated over many years is finally being added to the game. So, in order of significance, here are my highlights. We have a new player starter pack, more weapons that shoot straight, enhanceable weapons to curb RNG along with curated rules, shiny variants of weapons to help the uh, slot machine style Destiny player feel motivated to play, 100 more vault spaces. Not a joke. And then finally, the super black shader. <laughs> I kind of want to comment on that one now. So I've always said that when Nintendo is in trouble, they are going to probably release a remaster of Super Smash Bros. Melee. That is their ace in the hole. I think the Super Black Shader is Bungie's ace in the hole, which could infer that things are getting a bit wild at the figurative Caillou's house of Bungie. Overall, the core activity of this free expansion is called Onslaught. It is a tower defense game mode, and I don't really have a comment on that because if you think about it, that's always been the core activity of Destiny. You have your ghost slowly unlock a door while you protect it from waves of enemy. Ultimately, my fun factor to me relies on the ratio between the difficulty and auto-scroller sections where it's just a foregone conclusion and everything falls over. They have to nail that right so it doesn't feel boring to get to the deeper waves. I'll quickly mention the starter pack. I believe it's Gift of the Thunder Gods again or Gift of the Thunder Gods 2. Remember when they sold that starter pack for silver a while back with those exotics and that wasn't a really good idea? I think they learned their lesson here. I really want to stress when I have a new friend trying to get into Destiny 2, that starter pack is the difference maker between sending them a college dissertation a guide to follow versus pick up that chest, have fun. Moving on, I want to comment about the vault space and everybody who says, oh, we have enough vault space. We don't. I play all aspects of the games competitively. I like to speedrun PvE. I like to have gear to compete in Gambit. And I do play PvP at a high level on all three characters in almost every subclass in the game. There is simply not enough space. And every time somebody brings it up, Bungie goes, it's not technologically possible, we just can't do it right now. And yet, when the company seems to be under fire right now, Sony kind of pressuring them, wow, 100 vault spaces just appeared. And I'm definitely grateful for that, but what has to shift in the background to make this a priority? That's just, that's on my mind. Sure, this doesn't affect every single player, but the end game should be built for players to thrive in, not to dread reaching. Moving on, I want to mention my positive highlights, which was the mountaintop. Yeah, that old grenade launcher. Now it is used for arena shooter style rocket jumping, where you don't have that much self damage, you shoot the floor, and you jump really high. That is amazing, and I'm looking forward to breaking ankles using it with Tommy's matchbook, and perhaps Behemoth. The next one is the stranger's rifle footage, it's called Elsie's rifle. It looks incredible. It looks like possibly the best controller pulse rifle in the entire game. Probably the best legendary in the energy slot. And it's void. So you can use it with conditional. I'm just really excited when weapons shoot straight for once and you can shoot through flinch. Feels good. But uh, this is going to be a low light now. Despite Luna's Howl shooting straight, the magnificent Howl perk was reworked in a way that I don't feel like fits the original theme of the gun. Its identity seems a little lost in translation. I'll expand on that thought in a later video. For now, I'm just moving on. More lowlights. Um, I see some complaints, this is not my complaints by the way, of endgame PvE players are disappointed that raid weapons will be obtainable rewards from the new Onslaught activity. We have the five barons and the succession. In addition, these critics also praise the fact that there is no crafting in this activity and that the roles are random. I never could put myself in this headspace, but I do understand that it does sell copies that desire to pull the slot machine, otherwise Bungie would never implement it. I'm always cool with that in games that have a rich trading system, because I'm almost always able to get value out of my time invested. Even if it's not exactly what I was looking for, I can just sell the item and then work towards saving to buy what I actually want. Since Destiny does not have a trading system like that, I will never really understand the headspace of players who find appeal in randomness of loot and an artificial waste of my time. But if Bungie has the data and it leads to a healthier, happier player base, then by all means, I'll just grind a little bit extra and take a 3.5 out of 5 instead of a 5 out of 5. Because y'all can hold me to this, I play the game anyway. I like 
the game. I like the game even more when I can continue playing the game doing things I like. Funny enough, me and these critics agree on one thing, which is that the time gates are kind of silly. And even Bungie backpedaled on this eventually. You can see a message link description below. They updated that all the weapons will be obtainable about three weeks earlier than planned, but that's still a time gate. Once again, this falls into the category of something I dislike, but if it gets the results Bungie is looking for and a happier player base, then I guess I'll just deal with it. Okay, now onto the meat and potatoes of this video, which is listing out all the weapons obtainable in this expansion. I'm gonna quickly list all of them. I'm not gonna talk about all the possible roles. I'm gonna talk about my favorite roles of each in order of significance, but right now, just firing them off. Forbearance, Succession, Falling Guillotine, The Recluse, The Mountaintop, Hammerhead, Blast Furnace, Edge Transit, Luna's Howl, Midnight Coup, Hung Jury, Elsie's Rifle. For fun, I want to mention the weapons that were cut from this expansion that we learned via the Massive Breakdown podcast. A Bungie dev, Chris Proctor, mentioned that we could have had instead Chroma Rush, First In, Last Out, Dust Rock Blues, 21% Delirium, Fatebringer, Dire Promise, Wastelander, Antiope, Trophy Hunter, Arantil. For fun, I'll go into those weapons too, but I want to stress it here, these are not going to be featured in the expansion. So let's go back to talking about the ones that are going to be featured in this expansion in order of significance. Number one on my list is Succession with Discord and Snap. This makes sense because it's my main sniper rifle already in the kinetic slot, except now with the perk that can refund bullets for just doing what I do normally. Number two is Luna's Howl. Despite me being very mad about the Sag Howl uh, perk or whatever they call it, I'm still going to use it anyway, and it's still going to be a very consistent hand cannon. And they mentioned in the Bungie.net article that they're looking to launch Not Forgotten in the future when the time is right, which means that they could be setting the stage for perhaps an exotic version of Not Forgotten that appeals more to its original identity, at least the one that the high-level players thought of. So, fingers crossed for that, but if I had to pick a Luna's Howl role, it would be Slideshot with Magnificent Howl, Corkscrew, Steady, Range, Masterwork for a good mix of stats. Number three is the mountaintop simply for rocket jump, but I need to test damage interactions to know what role to go for if I want to sprinkle in some one hit kills later. Number four is Elsie's rifle because that honestly looks like the best pulse in the energy slot. Zen headseeker or maybe Zen damage booster. Blast furnace, kinetic slot, 18 zoom. I'm going to go with Zen and a damage booster. Very obvious. Shoot straight. Speaking of shoot straight, number six is midnight coup. I'm going with the previously unobtainable combo of explosive zen moment the last wish hand cannon used to feature this perk combo but when they made them craftable that role was no longer obtainable number seven is recluse with hip fire grip and master of arms or the hip fire perk you know what i'm talking about all these weapons should be enhanceable in the future and they should feature a curated role or something like that so enhanced hip fire and master of arms and recluse even at 13 zoom i'm still taking that that looks like a very lethal combo Number eight is Hung Jury, and I already own a better role than what they're offering, but for fun I'll just say no distractions, box breathing. Yeah, I already own it. The old one has the Omelon Fluid Dynamics uh, booster, so I just get extra stability, whereas the new origin trait for all these weapons gives you melee or grenade energy depending on your subclass. Number nine is Hammerhead. Just don't overthink it. Rampage, high impact reserves, or something like that. Just stack up free damage. Number 10 is Edge Transit. I'm pretty much just waiting for a PvE sweat like Vendetta or Aegis to tell me what to run on it. But on my own, I'll probably keep like five or six of them in my vault, all with double perks where I can switch off like Cascade Point to something else in the menu. Like imagine going Envious Assassin to Cascade Point, Air Striking over a boss, Celestial Nighthawk, Menu Swap, Repeat. It has a lot of possibilities for endgame speedruns. So I just want to keep that in mind. Number 11 is Forbearance. I already own a perfect one. I don't want it, but it does have Demo Wellspring if I want to have an ability-based build, and it might have Disruption Break for PvP where I want to match the element. Number 12 is Falling Guillotine. Just put Forp a Weapon and Eager. I'm not going to overcomplicate it because we also have the Slammer Sword, which is Stasis, and that might also just do the job. Now let's move on to the Cut Weapon Dream Rolls. I have to repeat it again. These weapons that I'm about to talk about are not going to be in the game, nor have these perks even been mentioned. I'm making them up. So number one, I would say Trophy Hunter is the most important with Discord Snap. That is a 50 zoom sniper rifle with a clean scope. Number two is Annie of D just because I'm really, really fond of the weapon. But if they were crazy enough to put Zen Moment and Hipfire on an SMG with 14-ish zoom, I'm there. 
Chroma Rush, that would be number three. A Zen hip fire on an auto rifle. I would take that too. Number four, I kind of wanted to be thematic because if you're using Dust Rock Blues, it's going to be used with Not Forgotten, right? So I think Harmony and Barrel Constrictor on the same gun would be crazy because if you get like a Lunas How Not Forgotten kill, you could switch to the shotgun and have a taste of Forsaken for a double kill. In a similar vein, number five is the Wastelander shotgun with Offense Strike and Barrel Constrictor so you can kind of have a hip fire killing spree. Would be fun. Six is first in, last out, and I think that the theme of double slug swapping just doesn't really work unless they make a brand new perk. So I'd probably say we need a slug with triple tap cascade point to match the strand slug so you can do double slug, double cascade point. Number seven is 21% delirium. I would say the first perk is onslaught or deconstruct and the second perk is killing tally, which keeps its theme as an ad clear machine. Number eight is dire promise, a classic dueling hand cannon. So I think Ellie cap and moving target would make the most sense because you just can't get that combo in the kinetic slot anymore. It moves really fast on a stasis subclass. Number nine would be Fatebringer, and I would like to see them move it to the Arc energy slot and have both Dragonfly and Firefly. I feel like that would be a nice little glow up and a nod to Destiny 1. Number 10 would be Arantil with both Discord and Backup Plan, so the Fusion Rifle friends can have more Fusion Rifle. Alright friends, that pretty much wraps things up, so enjoy some Lunas Howl gameplay, and maybe I'll hit you with another opinion piece in the future. See you on the next. Today, my friends, we are using Luna's Howl since this weapon was just revealed in the Into the Light weapon reveal stream. It, it's something description below. You'll, you've already seen it. Let's be honest. You've already seen it. I am the only gamer at B. Unless. Crosshair placement. You know what, let's put a smoke there at the most common angle and let's start our flank soon. That has not aged a day. Sheesh. Help! <laughs> Help! If teammate falls over, this is good for my invis. It's fine. I'll support him without invis. Yo, that heal was so clutch. Too many. Better reposition. Use the speed of chaperone to reposition. Shotgun or close? Question mark. I'm trying to be aggressive with these peak shots. I know it's invis. Reveal die. So. Always check my radar booster. Unwinnable. You know teammates there, hold up. That changes things. Uh, even with these 50 AE, I can't hit it. I need speed loaders uh, active. All right, now we wait. Took you long enough. Nice little body shot action there. No, shoot the loot. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're going to put that there and go. I have leeching, so I get my health back. No, oh, I tried to hit fire. This is why you always wear hip fire grip. You know, honestly, if I'm not hitting the inner anyway, we're putting hip fire grip on. It's too much of a staple for me to hit those yellows from the hip. I just play better. 
Oh, yeah, I remember why it's all coming back to me. I'm touching the death note. That's how you used to use it. Pop him twice in the head, and then hip fire. Now, power ammo is going to be a little difficult to deal with, but luckily, I have a tether. An A flag might be looking like a snack. And a machine gun? No. I mean, it's an SMG. Kind of similar. Save me. I heard him jump, so maybe on the platform? Just wanted to take away his cover with that nade. I mean, if you put up a zoning nade there, he doesn't want me to be here. I was so ambitious with that tether. I wanted four. I wanted four because I saw the orbs behind me. I thought if that would hit one or two, I could bob and weave with the uh, Amos's break of the dodge, get my health back, re-peak. I'm sorry, teammate. I can't, like... Will you not to peek that I... Waiting. They got the good simultaneous peek going on. Make an orb, make an orb, make an orb. It's around here somewhere, I know it is. That's not worth the orb. It, it just ain't. I can take Maghal somewhere else, though. It's gonna survive. Telepathy was the word I was thinking of. I don't have telepathy. I can't tell you not to peek. Tasty orb. All those orbs look tasty. Hold up. Get back on these zones. I waited until he finished the dodge. I'm doing a lot better on that about controller. Is waiting till they get off the dodge. Try to mix up my movement a little bit. Because I ain't shooting them during the dodge. It's too difficult. I can't do anything about the well. Oh, yes, I can. I have Luna's How. I win. No. Prosecutor. What was that? A firefly? Dragonfly, that is so fucking sick that that worked for him. That's amazing. I was going to say, get tunnel vision on me. Team, it'll clean you up. Alright, so what I wanted to do against the well is stack up the Magnificent Halperk and just keep hitting out DPSing them. But honestly, dying to that Dragonfly was way cooler. I 
I know someone's behind me. I don't know if he knew I was there, though. I might have been safe to just wide peek it. It's not get exactly in the corner. That's too obvious. Your teammate's going to be mad about that. Oh, I hit that? Skips are gonna hurt. And now they're gonna think the tether is the real radar ping. So I have my one. I do that too. Team shot with my smoke here in a sec. Take Maghel somewhere else? Beautiful. They see the tether for us, so take them close. I am not winning against that. Let's just leave. In fact, there's no reason to even go over there. They have to come to us if they want to win. Alright, I think that was a pretty decent showcase of Luna's house. Some highs and lows in this match. Just in case this perk changes, at least you have some gameplay to show you what it used to do. The nerfed and nerfed version, not the future nerfed and nerfed nerfed version that we're getting in Into the Light. I can't tell you exactly what the perk does. We might know tomorrow when the TWAB releases or whatever document they have. So I just, I don't know. Anyway, fits like a glove, best controller setup. I should have been on freehand grip from the start because double head into hip fire is the wave. That's just the best way to play it. I know with speed loaders, I might seem tempted to build up this high AE and go for jump shots, but controller is just not built for that. It's not easy to do, nor is it consistent. So I'm just going to build a play style around not doing that unless I have to. And I see I got raided by Astacross. Thank you, viewers. Hopefully I'm still in queue here. Excellent. Um, so hi to Astrocross viewers on Twitch. And uh, goodbye to YouTube viewers. Have a great rest of your day.